hope that everybody's Memorial Day was awesome. It was amazing. That everybody got some good sleep, recovered from whatever kind of activities you were doing. I had a massive amount of, um, well, not a massive amount. I had, <coughs> I had my family, all my kids, their kids. Um, my kids, their kids, my ex-husband, my current guy, my best friend, everybody here. It was, it was interesting. We smoked brisket and huh, I got coffee. <laughs> um, we smoked brisket and ribs and played darts and did, you know, just like laughter and music and everything. It was just very, very chill, very relaxed. Um, great way to just kind of spend the day. So, um, and gratitude for that for sure. And then this morning I've been sitting here. I just had like another leisurely morning. Like I said yesterday, I'm like, I think that this is, or that was day before yesterday. I was talking about how I think that leisure is definitely, um, kind of a running theme in my life right now, just to just be leisurely with things. Hey, morning, Julie, morning, Deborah, morning, KD, Harold, David, Katie, David, AJ, oh my goodness, morning, Addison, a whole bunch of people, morning, 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 um, Dennis, uh, hey, I got my laundry going too, <laughs> laundry and wash, laundry in the dryer, my kitchen is covered in dishes that are all clean that need to be put away, but you know what, I have children to do that, they are my little minions, and I am the master. Yeah, okay, so you guys get to see like all these sides of me. Um, so now, so this morning in all this leisure and everything and just good vibes, you guys are going to get sick and tired of me saying, and you know, amazing sex and this and that and coffee in bed and breakfast and all this kind of stuff. But I share those intimacies because I think that all of us should be waking up in leisure and just feel good and you know just positive energy and connection whatever that might look like because much like my my conscious coffee title it talks about you know it's faith fortune fun and sex well the sex is is fun right and the reason I'm pulling sex into faith and fortune um, is because it's about the good sex and I get, I, I have a lot of people that come to me and they want skills and they want to know how, you know, how to get their girl to do this, how to get their girl to do that, how to last longer, how to whatever their freaking questions are. And you should see some of the messages that I get. Like, I'm just like, no, I don't do that. No, I don't do that. No, I don't do that. What were you hoping from that is because we look at our sex in such a physical friction based release aspect instead of a, a vulnerable opening recharging aspect and for me sex is all about recharging there's release to it but it's about kind of like filling up your your tank you know like recharging your battery and really truly connecting and it's about connecting with self connecting with the divine and of course connecting with your partner and it's it's th through that kind of energy that, that that sexual energy being creative energy being an energy that we can that we can grab a hold of and that we can do so much with not just actual friction based sex but think of sex when i say sex at least that i'm talking about creation that i'm talking about like really truly turning it up and getting in there and creating all the yummy juiciness of a life that we want not just in the bedroom of course the bedroom is a nice piece of it of course we want to enjoy that pretty sure that the majority of people do and for those who say no that doesn't matter to me you just haven't had some good sex you just haven't had good connection you haven't really truly been embraced by love penetrated by love and penetrated by that amazing amazing sensations and feelings f word feelings here and that's what it really comes down to right we as human beings tend to limit our feeling 
yet we want miracles to happen, yet we want to manifest great things, we want to enjoy life, we want to have ease and flow, we want to, you know, have all, we want to have depth, we want to have complexity, but we don't want the trauma, we don't want the, the agony, we don't want the trauma, we don't want the bullshit, right? Well, we're going to get bullshit, we're going to get drama, we're going to get trauma, we're living beings, that's part of being alive. And that's also how we learn and grow and create desire from the knowing of what we do not want is birth the knowing of what we do want. So it's very, very important to look at those negative charged things that you might be facing as, as though they are opportunities to get to know yourself better, to gain a little bit more faith in life in God, and to really cast out those, you know, send out those desire rockets, you could say, and really call in the things that you want. So learning how to flip gears from the, the, you know, the not having to the having. Hey, Evangeline. Yeah, I call a whole bunch of more people on here. Bobby. And Johnny and Daniel. All right. I can't move up any further. Sorry, guys. Oh, getting messaged. All right, there we go. Um, so it really is about bringing your attention, your feeling base. Hold on. I'm trying to deal with somebody here. It was like pop, 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 jump on, watch conscious coffee. Dang it guys. Like stop messaging me. Just watch conscious coffee. No, <laughs> not going to share personal stuff on on conscious coffee like that. Somebody else isn't. I share my personal stuff all the time. Mm. Oh my gosh, you should see my phone right now. It's like boom, boom, boom. People sending me text messages and Facebook messages. All really good stuff. All amazing clients, like some of my favorite clients messaging me all at the same time. It's like, okay, I can't, I can't concentrate for all the messages that are coming. I, I love you, but here we go. So, feeling feeling is where we're at. If when we really get into the feeling of things and we really start to embrace the feeling of things, not just making it about the friction, not just making it about the action. So using sex here as the piece that we're focusing in on, because a lot of us can understand, you know, we had a conversation going last night. I think it was my ex-husband who kind of brought it up and was talking about, you know, like, well, what do you mean? Like, what's this? What's that? I'm like, well, this is why we didn't work out right here. You know, like, uh, you're not understanding the depth, the complexity of what I'm trying to discuss. So what the topic was, was, you know, like kind of like sex is just sex, right? It can just be like this. And if the feeling kind of changes, well, then, you know, try a different location, try a different spot, try a different that, right? Um, it's not, it's not about that. What feeling, true feeling is, I think trash might be coming. I'm always out here when the trash guy comes or the recycle guy. It's crazy. What happens when we're not feeling? It basically means that we're not being connected. We're not being present in ourself. Us women, we deal with this a lot. You ladies probably know what I'm talking about. You feel numb. You question if you can have an experience pleasure during sex. You might feel like the sex is just for your partner or or there's just too much water underneath the bridge for, for it to actually be good, for it to be positive, you know, like that. So it's just more duty-based. You're like, eh, which is why you're like, oh, maybe once a week, once a month would be better. How about birthday, anniversary, and Christmas? Maybe that's a little bit better. You know, like, let's just scatter it out. Who really needs that? It's overrated. Stop being so sexually focused, all that kind of stuff. And we go through that lack of feeling, that that disconnect, because that's what it really truly is, because we have kind of armored ourselves up. We have shielded ourselves in different ways, which prevents us from actually feeling. So our bodies store emotional stuff, emotional trauma 
in our in our physical body okay and it hardens us in different ways so it makes it very kind of like a baker who can just reach into the hot oven and grab something out because of all the calluses on their hands after years and years they build up these calluses so they don't feel the heat as much well that is what happens when we store negative emotion in our body we start to build up callus in different areas of our body especially our genitals ladies we are really really good at this guys if you have different sexual issues this could be part of your problem as well but I'm talking about the ladies here and it really does make it a lot harder for us to feel at a, at a really deep level and be able to connect to our partner so it makes it harder for us to achieve orgasm funny enough intimacy share anybody who's new on here I get very intimate sometimes I use foul language here's my little disclaimer I might offend you I might shock you I might do all these different things because I see a couple new people on here that have recently friended me and messaged me and everything so I hope that you're you can just like breathe through this go okay there she goes okay so here's my intimacy share it's really not that big of a deal um but it is a big deal because it's kind of it's it's one of those one of those just it just it is it's a big deal because it's a lesson okay it's a lesson so last yesterday yesterday morning yesterday morning I had sex like three four times and it was you know like three four hours I'm saying like probably like 5 a.m. to like 9 a.m. off and on and it was good sex like really really good sex very connective tons of feeling tons of sensation lots of good depth and everything some laughter some humor you know great connection in their playfulness and I was just in this orgasmic energy where I felt like I was I, I was joking around about like man I feel like I'm on drugs now because I was just in this euphoric state where everything was kind of foggy for a half a second and just kind of like I was walking through the clouds and my body felt just awesome but I did not experience a climax so I did not experience this high point and then this drop down okay and you might be going well what the heck is she talking about what orgasm climax they are two different things they are two very very different things I'm not going to get into the big juicy details of this teach a class on it actually in the summer and everything I teach a lot of different things it's all over in different programs and workshops so if you're local to my area make sure that you hit my summer orgasm camp that is out in August and everything also in the winter time in December and it's called orgasm camp in the summer um, and really get into female orgasm and sexuality in that in that particular workshop but what I experienced was I experienced all these beautiful yummy just like waves of orgasm pouring through me and it felt so good and it really carried me throughout the whole day I've been kind of like on an orgasmic high the last four or five days anyway just because I've been having some like really good like time consistent been able in the leisure of everything to kind of just do a little bit more of that and really focus in and have that time but then last night had ended up in this beautiful orgasmic wave and guess what happened because I made the comment to my partner I was like yesterday morning I was like you know this is amazing and he was like yeah 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 you're like you're hitting on like yeah but I haven't even like touched the ceiling like I'm not even scraping the ceiling here I'm not even coming close he's like really really like you could I thought that you I'm like no I'm not like I, I was explaining to him like these differences of like the waves that I've been riding versus hitting this high point and then going bam right bam way up here and then kind of like drifting down just like ah, oh, yeah like right down into like it is soaking into a nice warm hot bath and everything does that feel good state and I was like really I'm like yeah no I was like I, I'm not complaining it's great right and I could tell that he had like a little bit of disappointment going like man I thought that I had her I'm like no but I'm not complaining like I'm getting fed and I was explaining to him the hormones that drop down and what happens in the female body and all this good yummy stuff which is opening up and the more that consistency happens the deeper that goes the more I'm vulnerable to it the more I step into that space of orgasm guess what the easier it is for me to achieve that to stay in it to keep that going because it keeps the body active it keeps the body open it keeps the body hungry for it even though you're full you're still hungry it's like this really yummy space to be in and it was like, okay, well then last night we go and we have sex on another two, three hours. I don't know. I think I went to bed like at three o'clock in the morning by the time like I fell asleep. Um, and then 
what happened was it was like this like this mind blowing like deep beautiful orgasm that just kind of like came up and I'm like pushing down because it felt like it was like pushing down and then it kind of like pulled up really really hardcore pulled up and took me into that climax so that really high edge and I was just like oh. so I decided that since I had talked to him in the morning about how this is not happening and this is what's happening that I would share with him oh by the way did you notice any sensation changes in my body in our connection level there because that that was a climax and I was like yeah because I get like all vibrating and and all this kind of stuff so the reason I share that is because it goes along with faith it goes along with fortune it goes along with fun if you're you know our sex and our our openness to orgasm it plays such a significant role and it's why I cannot ever really just let it fully out of my coaching scope because my coaching practice is changing and changing and changing right it's ever evolving into something that that I never thought that it could be but there's always this little tidbit this little piece that a lot of coaches tend to ignore and that is our sex that is our orgasm that is that that state of being that we want to just kind of disown because most of us are not happy with it we're not getting what we want out of it we're not getting enough of it we don't really understand it you know there's we're feeling empty in it there's all this different stuff going on and I want you to know that you want to find your depth there you want to find your play there you want to find just this massive, beautiful yumminess there and really truly connect and open up and test yourself, like push yourself to reach into that sexual orgasmic state, whether it is in your kissing, in your touching, in your holding, in your just eye gazing together, in your connection, your laughter, your conversation with your partner, or, your, or just being with self and self-pleasure because the deeper you can go and the more vulnerable you can get in those moments where you can just totally like open up and completely embrace those moments, guess what? You are in that time frame. You are experiencing like a real life intense version of what we're supposed to be doing in our money, in our relating with everybody, in our health, in life in general. That is what thriving feels like. If you ever want to know what does thriving mean these people talk about thriving you know or Kendall talks about living a fuck yes life what does fuck yes life mean what does thriving mean what does orgasmic living mean it means to live in a state of being where you feel that yummy juiciness like you get right there when you're just riding those yummy juicy waves of actual orgasm when you are intimate with a partner not when you're having duty sex not when you're doing what you don't want to be doing not when you're like lip noodling it and you're just like oh yeah I'm not really into this let's just get it over with no not that it's when you get into that really juicy flow and the more you captivate that that's where you access so much joy so much creation you know like wealth riches whatever you want to say here abundance kind of just starts to flow in it makes it where you can hold so much more but if you're shut down in this area in your sex I guarantee you that you're going to find a whole bunch of other areas that you're going to be shut down in. And for me personally, I get shut down. I get shut down all the time. You know, life rolls around, shit happens. I, I, I'm human. I'm a work in progress, constantly evolving and working on self and learning more about myself and more about life and everything and energy and, and everything like that. Yes, I'm very inquisitive. Yes, I, I understand how to go in and research things and I'm very adaptable, but coachable, I guess you could say too. I'm very coachable on stuff. I'm willing to try. I'm willing to like, not just try, but just to jump in and do it. And you have to have that mindset. But when I get really, really stuck on something, when I get really just like things are not moving for me, I turn to my actual bedroom scene 
my actual sexing because I go, you know what? You're kind of shut down here too. Look at this. You're shut down here. You're shut down here. Things aren't flowing. You're not open. You're constricting. You're armoring up. You're protecting yourself. And when we go into protection mode like this, what do we do? When we're like this, we are literally armoring up. So we armor means I'm not going to be penetrated. I'm not going to feel. I'm not going to connect. I'm not going to allow you to hold or to hold anything. This right here, as we open, notice what's going on here. As I open, chest open, emotions open, heart opens, body opens, energy opens. And when we open, we become that magnet to attract. So we call in. Well, also in that opening and that calling in, when we open in that fashion, we call in good shit. Okay, that's where we call in our orgasm. That's where we call in our beauty. That's where we call in the love. We call in the abundance. The dog is tearing apart a toy. That's where we call in all that good stuff. But we've got to trust. Key here, we've got to trust self and life and then anything else to be able to do that. And what I tend to do is I lean on my sex and I work on my sex to open myself up. So I'll go after the sexual aspect of opening up. I'll go, oh wow, you're really shut down there. Oh wow, look at that, you're really shut down there. Your orgasm's like this big. And you know how big and awesome your orgasm to be. So go after that. And that's that's just what I do. That's like that's my healing path. I always turn to opening up in that way and trying to connect at a deeper level. And I'm not talking about opening up about going and having a whole bunch of sex. I'm not talking about going and, you know, just like, and just fucking it out as a couple of my clients like to call it. No, because that is just, that's no better than washing your hands a lot. Okay. You're going to dry out your skin. You're going to get chapped from it. It's just not going to be very comfortable. You're really not doing any good from that. It is not about the physical act here. It is about the emotional, energetic, mental act of it and that deep connection. So going internally with your sex to connect externally with a partner and to really allow yourself to be penetrated in multiple ways. Here you go though. Your partner has got to be willing to penetrate you in multiple ways. If you are with somebody who's not willing to do that, who's operating over here on this low surface level, who's just not there, better off working with yourself. Just work with yourself in that instance because that's exactly what has to happen. You've got to try to open up those areas of your being. And you've got to have a little bit of faith, a little bit of faith, which I actually prefer the word certainty because faith is, is, is certainty. It's about certainty of that it just shall be. This is what I'm deeming it. This is what I'm requesting. This is what I'm commanding in. And to state that and to focus on that as though it already is instead of focusing in on what you do not have because we tend to go, oh, I really don't have a lot of sex in my life. Where's the sex at? How am I going to get the sex? Where is it coming from? Focus, focus, focus on the not having. And if you're focusing on not having it, well, I'm sorry, but it's just going to remain not having. It just is. So you've got to change that mindset and go, wow, look at all the opportunity. Look at all the yumminess out there. You know, if you're single and you I've been single a few times you know but I always have I have the mindset of yeah so I'm single for a half a second there's so many great people out there there's so many great guys out there why well, you know like they're they're all over the place my belief is that there are great people all over the place so it's easy to find a great person somebody else could have the same mindset the different mindset same scenario and say Oh, I don't know. There's just nobody out here. Where are all the good guys at? You know, well, if you're going, where are all the good guys at? Then you're not going to find a good guy. I can tell you that there's good guys everywhere because that's my mindset. That is exactly what you have to do in manifestation. Notice where your mindset is at on the having or the not having. Opening up, being vulnerable, trusting life, trusting self, allowing spirit, allowing God to lead, allowing the energy to lead you. Get into your flow. Find that space for flow and... Let me tell you, it will flow in. It will flow in in massive amounts. It's just a matter of like letting it come in because you've got to be an open receiver, male or female. You have to be able to receive what is coming to you because if you ask for it to come in and then you block it up like this, well, it's not going to even, it's going to bounce right off of you. 
so many great opportunities are going to be presented to you and you are not going to be able to feel them because you're not going to be able to see them properly because you're blocking. You're blocking like this. So you might be like, oh yeah, that looks great. But then you can't really see what's going on because you're blocking. So if you've got stuff coming to you or if you're just you kind of like have things tap on you and you sense that something's coming, but it's not actually sticking or it's not actually coming in. Well, guess what? That's because you're doing this. You might be going, oh, over here. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Oh, yeah, but you're blocking because there's something inside of you that's telling you right now you're not ready. You might think that you're ready, but you're not ready because when you're ready, you're ready. And you're going to know that you're ready because your guard's going to come down. You're going to feel more open. You're going to feel more connected. You're going to feel more expansive. You're going to feel more certain, more clarity. And clarity is key. Clarity will tell you where you're at in your process because an unclear mind you're not going to be able to focus you're not really going to know what your feelings are what your emotions are and if you're not clear of mind then you're not going to be have any of that stuff really truly manifest it also means lack of clarity means i don't know what i want because i can't see where i'm going because i'm blocking i'm blocking so think about that just think about that. Who else popped on here? Hey, Ray. Angie. Morning, Angie. I love Angie. She's such a beautiful, beautiful soul. Uh, Jason, Jim, Susanna, and David. Wow, a whole bunch of people. Okay, guys. So, yeah. Faith, fortune, fun. Oh, I forgot the fun part. Well, the fun part is that you're having fun doing all of that. You need to just like have fun, learn how to play, let your big kid out and crap. Yesterday, um, my lover, he hung up a dartboard in my, in my garage and I have not played darts for eight to 10 years. And it was just one of those things. I was like, I actually love playing darts. Love, love, love playing darts. And I haven't played forever because I just, I just haven't had somebody in my life that played darts. And then he brings a dartboard to my house and hangs it up. And we were playing darts and the kids and friends and we're all out there and we're playing darts. And I kicked my, my ex's butt. That was good. I kicked my current guy's butt too. That was good. Um, but it is about, you know, like just going and doing stuff like that, like stepping in and playing and, and I mean, yeah, you can get serious. You can be very, very serious. I get serious like at the end, right when it really matters, then I get serious and I, bam, like, cause I want to win. I do. I'm very, very competitive. But the play is so much more important to really just take that in and laugh about it and stop not, stop trying to be such, I mean, against the armor thing, when we're armored like this, it's very hard for us to play. It is extremely hard for us to play when we are armored up because we can't feel our own joy. We can't feel our own humor it's hard for us to laugh at things because armor makes us serious it makes us so stinking serious and guess what serious is boring it just is i mean who wants to be around somebody who's just like always like eh, 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 eh. i mean like oh god no no we want joy we want connection we want we want that playful spirit we want to be ignited and ign being ignited means that you have to kind of tap into that joy and that play and i know that there's a lot of crap that goes on in our lives you know like we get hurt we have a whole bunch of really bad stuff happen to us and stuff and and it's hard sometimes to find our joy it's hard sometimes to be playful and to let ourselves laugh when we're really going through some crap, some really hard times, when we're questioning why. But I can tell you that the way through that is to number one, focus on gratitude for the things that you do have, for the things that you have been blessed with, the lessons, the, the different things that you have received in the process of maybe whatever the heck is going on because you are receiving in that. And then to just captivate on those little moments, focus in and captivate them and allow yourself to kind of like smile just a little bit. Like yesterday I was um, playing darts and I turned around a couple times and my future son-in-law, him with his three kids are playing out in the alleyway and 
and my uh, one daughter who's holding her sister's baby and everything and she's holding the baby and connect you know just uh, sitting there and kind of like just in peace and my other kids are playing and everything and you know we're all talking and it was just this beautiful memory picture like this little snapshot for the mind to take in and it was about gratitude and here's the thing there's like I don't know if you've ever seen if you've ever seen the movie Mamma Mia I think it's Mamma Mia at the end of Mamma Mia no it's not Mamma Mia it is um the Tuscan Sun one is that what it's called Tuscan Sun ladies probably know that somebody help me out here under the Tuscan Sun, that movie. At the end of Under the Tuscan Sun, what's her face? I can't think of Diane, whatever her name is, the main character. She's this lovely lady. She buys this house in Italy. And at the end of the movie, and this is an old movie, so if you haven't seen it, I'm sorry for the spoiler. Um, tough shit, right? Um, it's really a good movie, though. It's one of just like really great feel good movies. It goes through a lot of different emotional states. At the end of the movie, she's sitting out on her patio, and her friend who had a baby and stuff was there. And she's got all these friends and all these, these you know, ugh, family that she has developed. So the most cherished people in her life. And everybody's there. And there's a scene where she's sitting down and she looks out at all the people. And she just gets this smile of gratitude on her face. This smile of gratitude. And I remember years ago when that movie came out, I think I was in my early 20s, and it came out and I remember watching that and I had one or two little children at the time, you know, like a two-year-old and a newborn or something like that, or maybe a two and a four-year-old. It was a while, it was a long time ago. Um, my oldest two were just little ones. I remember watching that movie and the whole movie was good. This is kind of a chick flick, but the piece that really obviously has stuck with me was that piece, that end piece, that smile of gratitude for all the cherished people, for that feeling, for that connection, for everybody being there. And I thought to myself way back then, I want that. I want that. That's what I want. That's what life is about. Life is about that feeling. Life is about that fullness. Life is about that connection and that pleasure of that connection to just be embraced by love like that. That felt so yummy back then. So yummy. It was something that I had never had. I grew up as an only child, even though I'm the youngest of five. My All my siblings were with their other parents and everything. And I grew up as an only child. And I never had a lot of people around me. And not that I ever wanted a large family, because I didn't think that I did, because it was foreign to me. Well, it became my life. Now I have seven children. Now I have this, these moments, frequently I have these moments where that scene gets remade right here in my own house, right here in my own life. And it's just amazing. It is amazing to embrace it, to feel it. But the joy, the fun comes from recognizing those moments, comes from leaning into those moments when they're happening and fully embracing them and just disconnecting from all the worry, all the fear, all the drama, all the pain, and really stepping in to those moments and being yes like breathe that shit in because it's really good it's really really good so I say so a lot oh. so <laughs> no uh, it's just just thoughts I share that because I think that ultimately we probably all want we do we all want connection we all want happiness we all want to feel loved and full. And that's one of the pieces to it. So if you're looking for connection, you're looking for love, you're looking for fullness, you're looking for just, you know, that thriving, abundant life, and you wonder, how can I get that? Focus in on gratitude, focus in on certainty, focus in on openness, vulnerability, and leaning into your yummy juiciness. Find your orgasm and you will find so much abundance so many miracles so much connection and we're not just talking about the sexual orgasm here we're talking about the orgasm of your life you are worth it 
And as I always end these, stop existing, start living. You can follow me at www.kendallwilliams.com. Announcements that I might have are, oh yeah, I haven't announced this week. Yes, I did. I announced yesterday. I don't remember what I did yesterday. It was Memorial Day. I had a baby on my lap that was grumpy and then passed out. Um, interesting video. No, yes, uh, I am running the free um, Stop Fucking Around workshop. It is a 10-day alignment ass kickery. It's a $300 value. Did I mention that it was free? I'm giving it to you for free. So I'm going to encourage you to register for that because guess what? The things that I teach, the things that I share, I've kind of condensed down and given you a 10 day intensive here for you to work through. I do encourage you to actually do it in 10 days. There's a reason why it's 10 days. It's about building momentum and getting in there and actually getting things to turn around for you. But you know what? If you do one video here and then in a month from now you do another video, you're still going to get something out of it, but it's going to be a lot harder. And if you just get into it and you register and you never open the damn course up, well, it's not my fault that things aren't changing because I did offer you something that was for free that really could change your life. You know, I was just reading um, one of my, one of the people that I follow um, he just sent out a whole thing and he was giving away a whole bunch of different free stuff. I didn't see it because I've been busy and I haven't actually really looked into my email in the last few days. I've just kind of been doing this whole leisure thing and like going on home vacation. But then I opened up my email this morning briefly to check something for that somebody had sent me and I saw this email from him and he was saying that he had like all these 10,000 people reached out to him on his free thing that he was doing saying, why did you take that down? I wanted to get that blah, 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 blah. Well, you know what? It goes down when it goes down. And if you don't take advantage of it, like right now, when I'm blabbing in your face about it, you can't say, well, she didn't talk about it. She never alerted us to it. No, it's going out in my newsletters. It's going out in my conscious coffees. It's that, you know, it's in a lot of my articles. It's all over the freaking place. It's on both of my profiles, all over the place. So you got no excuse. Take advantage of the $300 course. Okay. That's what I'm saying here. Take advantage of the $300 course. And then the other piece that I want to remind you guys of is that a lot of people are messaging me, I would like to work with you. How do I go about doing that? Click on the link in the comments here. I am doing free, okay? Again, notice I have a theme. It's called free. I am doing free micro consults. And micro consults are 30 minute phone or Facebook video consults where we get to just really quickly get in there. You get to give me all those details. We get to discuss things. You can feel a little bit meme one on one with you, what my coaching style is. Guess what? It's pretty much the way I am all the time. I'm not, what you see is what you get with me. I don't fuck around. I don't try to play any games on anything. So what you see here is basically me. Um, but I do kind of script a little bit more to like what your needs, what your desires are. And that's what a console is about. You getting the opportunity to share with me what you need, what you're going for in coaching, and me trying to figure out, am I the right coach for you or not? Like, is this going to work or not? So take advantage of the free micro consoles. They will be available until July 4th. It is a very simple, like five question application. Very, very simple. Then we just book a phone call or we book a time to get on here on Facebook. We do a, a video and we get all those details worked out and we see what kind of program, what kind of system, how coaching with me could potentially fucking change your life. There. Yeah. Because you know what? I have some really amazing testimonies. You should go read my testimonies or go read my reviews because I'm pretty damn good at what I do. So just saying. Let's get your life changed. You're worth it. You deserve a wonderful, absolutely amazing life where you are thriving, where you are abundant, where you are joyous, where you are turned on to every day. Turned on to every day. Like it is the best freaking lover that you've ever experienced. But it's your day. It's your life. And you just hunger more and more and more for it. And you are constantly receiving from it. So step into your life. Claim your life. Stop existing. Start living. Message me. Reach out. Take advantage of those free things that I'm offering. I will catch you tomorrow with another Conscious Coffee. Love you guys.